last video, I'll talk about how to make ESP32 as the web server, but the access is limited. We have to connect in the same internet network to access the web page so we can monitor the ESP sensor and control the LED. But how if we want to control it far away from home, far away from device? One of the solution is use MQTT protocol. So we're gonna download the web page from the code on ESP32 and with an apps on App Inventor and connect it with MQTT protocol. How to make it? Okay, let's go. Okay, here we have the code from the last tutorial. We're gonna use code until the chapter 4. And the chapter 4 is about connecting to the Wi Fi. So here we have the added 11 sensor and connecting to the Wi Fi. To connect to the MQTT broker, we have to install library in the Arduino IDE. Search the library and the name is sub sub client. This one, okay. And we install it. Include the library in your code. After that, make a variable to save your broker. Here, I use broker.mqtt.cool for our broker this time. It's my favorite public broker. Actually, there is a lot of public broker out there, just like HeavenQ, EMQX, OS IoT Core, and other public broker. Don't forget to add port for the NQTT broker. We're gonna use port 188C. Set the Wi-Fi client here to make this ESP as the client in PopSub client. Move to the default setup here, set the client server to the broker and port we were defined before. After that, use the same logic as the connecting to the Wi-Fi like this. Here, if the ESP successfully connect to the broker, it will show the alert in the serial monitor. As if it's not connect, it will be trying until it's connected. After that, let's make a void reconnect. Make a new void here, call it a reconnect, and copy paste your code before in this void. We will call this void reconnect in the void loop to make sure the ESP always connecting with the broker. Move to the void loop, let's add the void reconnect with logic. If client is not connected, we will call the void reconnect and the client dot loop. Of done to the code of the TST11 sensor. Here we're gonna upload or send the value of the temperature and humidity. First, we declare a card array to store temperature and humidity values as strings. The size of H is sufficient to hold numbers of a certain format. This code is a function to convert float values to string on AVR pass microcontroller such as ESP32 or ESP8266. Temperature and humidity are float variables to be converted. 6 indicates the total length of the string, including negative signs and decimal points. 2 indicates the number of numbers behind the comma. Time string and hume string will store the conversion results. After that, we're gonna upload, send, or publish it to the topic Icha IoT slash step. What's its topic? MQTT used the publisher subscriber PubSub model here. Publisher or sender sends a message to specific topic. Subscriber or receiver subscribes to that topic to receive the message. Simply, topic is message address in MQTT. Like, if I have a YouTube channel, I will publish my video to my channel as the publisher. And you, as the subscriber, or in here is receiver subscribe my channel okay 
you will receive the message or notification for my channel for my next video so the topic is simply the message address okay if it's all correct let's upload it to your ESP32 after your code is running on your ESP32 you have to connect MQTT Explorer what is MQTT Explorer? MQTT Explorer is QI application is to monitor, analyze, and manage communication in the MQTT protocol. This app is very useful for debugging and testing MQTT connections, especially when working with IoT devices such as ESP32, ESP82, or Raspberry Pi. You can download it in the link below or go to the Google and search MQTT Explorer. Okay, in MQTT Explorer, we add the connection. For the name, you can fill it with whatever you want, okay? Whatever you want. And for the host, here, we fill it with broker.mqtt.co. And for port is 1883. Like we have defined it before in the ASP, okay? After that, click save and connect. Because it's a public broker, of course, we have a lot of topic here. And please don't touch it. It's not yours, so don't touch it. In the search bar, type your topic before. Our name is, our name is us, Icha IoT. So we're gonna search Icha IoT here. And here we already have the data. It means it's success. Before, we will do monitoring. And now, we will do controlling. To receive a message, we will make a void callback. This void is for checking if we got a message or not from the broker. Okay. Why we need the void callback? MQTT use asynchronous communication, meaning the data are received in the background without interrupting the mind code. ESP32 or ESP8266 cannot continuously check for the message manually. So, void callback is called automatically when a message comes in. Without callback, the device will not know when there is an incoming message from the MQTT broker. Our topic is stored the name of the MQTT topic that received the message. Byte message store the content of MQTT message in the form of in the form of a byte array. Inside in line indicates the number of character in the message. MQTT message are sent as byte arrays, so they need to be converted to strings in order to be used. Why do we need to convert the string? Because the data resides in bytes. We need to concatenate each character into a string so we can compare on or off string on or off message. Then let's make a simple logic here. If we got a message from topic HIOT slash LAN, we will type the message into a logic. If the message is on, then the LED will be turned on. As if it's off, then LED will be turned off. Just like that. To do controlling, we have to subscribe the publisher who will control us. Control the ESP. Here, in the void setup, we add in the last line client.subscribe the topic you want. Here, I'm gonna each IoT slash LAN because we're gonna control the LDD. Then we upload it to the ESP32. Move to the ABP Inventor, make a new project here. Make a simple display here. We're gonna use labels and patterns. Level one for display the status of the broker. 
Level 2, to display the value for the, hum for the temperature. And level 3, for the humidity. And two buttons for lamp on and off. After that, we import an extension for MQTT. You can download the extension in the link below. Here, we drag the extension to the application. Then, scroll in the general sections and fill the broker with the broker server you have been at on your ESP. I use broker.mqtt.co And last, we add a timer, sensor timer. Drag it and move to the box. Here, we're gonna make a connection. Simply is similar with the reconnect for it in the ESP. Drag a block if from drag a block if from the control. Drag is disconnected from the MQTT extension and set the label status to showing it disconnected. And call the MQTT connect. Set the clean sessions into true. It means if this app is connected with broker, it will showing indication into the label and try to reconnecting again. Add new if from the control. Drag is connected from MQTT extension, then set the label status to connected. Because it was connected, call block subscribes from the MQTT extension. And add the topic we have been add in the ESP32 as the topic for the temperature and the humidity. The showing of the meshes, we're gonna make a message receiver. Here it's similar with callback in the ESP code. Drop the if from the control. At logic here, make sure it's equal symbols. Track the topic and add a text for our topic. Then set humidity label text to the message we have been received. It means if we get message from the topic HIOT slash humidity, it will set the, the text to showing up the message. To control the LED, it's really simple. Just drag the button one click, call publish from the MQTT extension, and change the topic to the topic we have been set in the ESP code, and add the message to on. Just copy this blocks and change the button to button 2, and change the message to off. Connect your app inventory with MIT AI2 companion in your phone to try your apps and how it works. Thanks for watching my video. If you have a question, just ask me in the comment below or DM me on my social media. Okay? Thank you for watching. Bye!